Any moment from now, we are expressing His Excellency the President of the Republic of Sierra Leone.
Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Sierra Leone, Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces, the Fountain of Honor, the Supreme Head of State. Can you be seated, everyone? Very good evening to you. Perhaps we could make a start in this lovely weather and a lovely occasion. The first lady, Madam Supreme of Sierra, my lord, the Chief Justice. The Honorable Chief Minister, Cabinet Minister, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Let me begin by stating the purpose of our gathering here this evening, which is to host the diplomatic and donor commissions to appear by His Excellency the President and the President. On that note, it is my distinct honor and privilege to acknowledge the distinguished presence of the forum by profile personalities. My Excellency, the Dean of the Diplomatic Corps, Excellencies, members of the Diplomatic Corps, Dr. Babatune A. Ahunzi, United Nations 
the resident coordinator, and of course, members of the diplomatic community. My name is Lamina Paul Zamboy, the Director of Protocol in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, and the moderator of the Your Excellency, Madam First Lady, our distinguished guest. Tonight marks yet again a momentous occasion in the life of the presidency, as well as that of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, and reaffirms our collective desire to collaborate and work together in the spirit of our common fraternity for effective diplomatic engagement. The goal is to ensure that we derive the maximum utility from our friends and partners working in Turkey, whilst engaging in meaningful partnership diplomatic community as well as the donor community for mutually beneficial relations. With these few words, I now have the distinct pleasure to invite the First Lady, Madam Fatima Gay, to deliver our welcome remarks. Please join me, ladies and gentlemen, to welcome the First Lady, Madam Fatima. the President of the Republic of Sierra Leone, retired Brigadier Julius Malabiro, my dearest husband, members of the diplomatic and our development partners, honorable ministers who are present, the Chief Minister, the Chief Justice, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Let me take this opportunity on behalf of the People's Resident, and on behalf of His Excellency, the President, Retired Brigadier Julius Malibu, to welcome you all this evening. And first of all, to say Happy New Year to you all, because this is the first time we're in the city of 2022, and I pray that 2022 will be a successful year for both diplomatic development partners and the government. We're here today for His Excellency to interact and network with the partners in Sierra Leone and to show appreciation to every one of you that you all matter and you are all very important in this country. His Excellency has asked that we host this dinner in your honor to say thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting this government. And thank you. For helping in our, diploma, in our democratic process in this country. At this point, I want to say you're all very welcome. Please eat, drink, and enjoy yourself as we all celebrate this day in the people's house because it belongs to us and you and everyone in this country. Thanks so very much. Partners have to come. We 
they have to refresh themselves together, they have to enjoy themselves together. And this is real friendship. So this is why we're here tonight. And on behalf of all of us, we want to extend our sincere appreciation to His Excellency the President and Madam President for hosting this event today. Our next speaker um, is from the donor community, a very distinguished representation. He has over 20 years of experience in donor funding, programming, and the office of which he's charged to lead um, takes care UN programs, common programming. And this is all in line with our common agenda and our common aspirations in line with the agenda 2030. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I now have the honor to introduce Dr. Babatunde the United Nations Resident Coordinator in Israel. Members of the Diplomacy Council and Four United Nations colleagues. We are members of the International Diplomacy Community, Christian Region, ladies and gentlemen. We are on behalf of the United Nations in Sierra Leone and the International Dialogue Partners to extend our thanks to His Excellency, the President of Madagascar, and His Excellency. We are extremely grateful for this initiative. It is indicative of the importance that His Excellency the President places on sustaining a friendly and warm relation that Sigalio has always maintained with the international community. In this regard, I would like to acknowledge the important and proactive role that Sigalio has played in many international forums, chiefly the United Nations. Of Justice Miata Samba of the International Criminal Court and of the President of the Fatima Bill to the Advisory Board of the Commission for Multilateral Diplomacy of the United Nations. I would like to use this opportunity to congratulate both Justice Samba and our Excellency the President. Last year, the country was in the first cycle of the international community which has continued to abolish the death penalty. It was then passed in 1991. The Sudan has also collaborated with the international community to abolish for the early start of the night to put in place all necessary measures needed for the Sudan to thrive from COVID-19. This is the most powerful and the effective and efficient spread of the United States. While the United States has a large and large capacity of the United States, of course, the support of the international partners 
appreciation to Ambassador Rule, the Dean of the Diplomatic Corps, and of course, a very fine couple. And of course, we will continue to provide you We will now listen to some of the questions in experience in politics, in economics, in developing partnership. He is considered a mover and a shaker in Sierra Leone, and he assumes one of the highest portfolios in the country. A well-respected gentleman, a household name, and someone who is a catalyst in terms of moving forward the agenda of His Excellency the President. Your Excellency, Madam First Lady, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I will waste no more time in introducing our next guest, our next speaker, who is the Chief Justice, who is the Chief Minister of the Republic of Sierra Leone, Jacob Jusu Outreach. 
for, for the effective interaction with our global partners, we've been able to consolidate our gains from our diplomat to such engagement. In this perspective, your role as members of the Diplomatic and Donor Committee is key in terms of giving credence to effective global and regional engagement through friendly interaction, objective assessment, and timely communication on matters of mutual interest and concern. Let me extend my profound appreciation to the level of collaboration we've enjoyed as a country with the diplomatic community. Since our assumption of office, we've witnessed first an impressive display of diplomatic etiquette in daily interaction with the diplomatic community. Our doors have always been open to welcome you, but also to digest your views and concerns on matters affecting our two sides. I'm happy to state here tonight that our cooperation has been effectively maximized. And partnership will indeed grow from strength to strength in the months and years ahead. Your Excellency, Madam First Lady, our distinguished friends, our guardian here tonight further speaks to our commitment to revitalize engagements with the diplomatic and donor community. And this has indeed yielded positive outcomes. Through this effort, we've been able to progress on a number of pertinent global issues, such as effective management of resources in the fight against COVID pandemic, for which valuable, significant, and timely support was received from your countries. Let me therefore, on behalf of His Excellency the President, extend our heartfelt appreciation to you and to, and to you to the government and people of your individual countries for the ongoing support towards the government and people of Siano. Even during the difficult period of COVID-19, we've been able to realize significant gains and we continue to work towards the spirit of genuine partnership. More importantly, trust and confidence in the government of His Excellency, Dr. Julius Modabio, has been the hallmark of this relationship. Our Ministry of Foreign Affairs has played and continues to play a coordinating role in order to facilitate development through the establishment of enduring framework mechanisms to guarantee the tolerance of diplomatic, but also trade and economic relations. The mode of cooperation will also be expanded through the consistent rollout of a number of joint commissions for cooperation and other agreements already signed by the government with a number of countries, in addition to the huge investment made in solidifying our bilateral relations. Your Excellency, Madam First Lady, our distinguished friends, let me add that Sierra Leone is now a respected player on the global stage. Consequently, at every available opportunity at the international forum, we've been able to make the case for Sierra Leone, being a small nation, but also a successful case story for reimagining for war. Today, we strive to re-engineer our policy focus to concentrate on leadership in the international society through strategic engagement. This is why we are aiming now. Let me conclude by conveying my best wishes for a productive tenure in Sierra Leone, the most beautiful country in the world, in your roles as high representatives of your country, and to encourage you to enjoy Sierra Leone, but also to continue to deliver on your individual mandates. But of course, we are here to die as well as to have a good time. So on that note, let me thank you once more for gracing this occasion. And to your excellency, the president and the first lady, my profound obligation for hosting this event. I thank you. We want to thank you very much, the Honorable Chief Minister, for those delightful comments, which continue to speak to the nature of our relationship um, as a government with our diplomatic community, including the development partners. So once more, let us give a round of applause
Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we have now reached the high point of this occasion. And now, I have the distinct honor and privilege to invite our keynote speaker for tonight's event, who is His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Serenio, Dr. Julius Mada Cleo. <laughs> Excellencies, members of the diplomatic and consular corps, our development partners, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Permit me to start by thanking each and every one of you present here this evening. Permit me to start by thanking each and every one of you present here today, friends, old and new, for joining us this evening to break bread and to share drinks. As you all know, eating together symboli symbolically strengthens our special bond of friendship that we have built and are nurturing through mutual trust, respect, and cooperation. We are committed to further enhancing mutual understanding, perceptions, and trust. We believe those are germane to sustainable and productive relations among our countries and institutions. In a world confronted with persistent and emerging challenges, from COVID-19, climate change, and its attendant impact, irregular migration, human migration, human trafficking, cyber crime, international crime, terrorism, the concerns about good governance, human rights and security, and peace and development, there is more need and not less, to stay actively engaged in global and regional dialogues that strengthen our collective hand in making lives better for our people. We believe that with mutual cooperation and respect among our country and friendly nations and partners, our aspiration and hard work towards achieving the sustainable development goals for our citizens is possible. We will therefore seek to increase our global diplomatic footprint by seeking to increase our, by seeking to deepen and broaden our cooperation with existing friends while also making new friends and working with new partners across the globe. We have been working to consolidate and enrich our democracy. And we have, under, we have undertaken a significant and unprecedented number of institutional governance and right reforms to that end. We are the fourth most peaceful country in Africa. And we lead regional indices for our fight against corruption, investment in human capital development. 
expanding gender empowerment and representation, fostering democratic freedom, and in protecting and promoting rights of persons. We seek to expand trade and economic relations. We offer a resource-rich, predictable, and inviting investment environment where all investments are guaranteed protection and promotion. Through our Development Partnership Committee Forum, we seek to strengthen intense strategic collaboration with our development partners and friends. We want more engagement on implementing our medium-term national development plan. We are grateful that targeted development assistance intervention by our partners are helping improve lives and communities from sanitation, healthcare, portable water, energy access, infrastructure, service delivery, to social safety and social protection. We also believe that establishing joint commission in cooperation and collaboration can we tackle and prevail over global existential threats and safely navigate the difficult pathway to building back better. There's no gain saying that our common problems and common interests require more diplomacy, not less. To that end, we will soon commission our first ever diplomatic academy that we trained foreign service officers in Sierra Leone and across the sub region. It will serve as a center of excellence for foreign and diplomatic studies in the sub region, and it will equip our foreign service officers with the highest skill level to engage in global diplomacy. New issues of demand, new approaches, and new expertise. COVID-19 has taught us also that mastering new technologies and, gain, and gaining proficiency in use the new tools will only enhance our diplomatic trade craft. Certainly, we therefore train each foreign service cater to meet these new demands and expectations. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Syria believes that it can contribute its fair share to dialogue on global and regional peace and development. In that spirit, Syria has received the mandate of ECOWAS community as the sole candidate for a seat at the United Nations Security Council in the non-permanent category. Clearly, Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, our bid tells a powerful story. The Syrian Union is a successful case of post-war reconstruction and peace building. That in peace, the voices of small nations matter at the highest levels of conversation and decision making because only those small nations can best articulate their experiences and concerns. As coordinator of the Committee of Ten on the Reform of the United Nations Security Council, Sierra Leone leads advocacy to address historical injustices and advance the common African position as presented in the Azuini Consensus and South Declaration. In West Africa, we live in a rapidly changing neighborhood where concerns about democratic governance are complicated by complex security and humanitarian threats. Events in Guinea, Mali, and now in Burkina Faso illustrate the urgent need to work together to peacefully reinstate democratic civilian rule and restore peace and stability. A stable and thriving West Africa, we contribute to regional and overall global peace and prosperity. Ultimately, the goal of our diplomacy is to ensure peace 
and prosperity in this region and across the world. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, let me conclude with a quick word of reflection on the views of long-standing America, American diplomat, William Bond, in his 10 parting thoughts to America's diplomats. He stated, and I quote, diplomacy may not be the world's oldest profession, but it remains one of the most misunderstood people, he went on, question its relevance and dismiss its practitioners, especially when international affairs are rocked by powerful and tumultuous transitions. But as for us leaders of government, we need professionals with the requisite skills and knowledge who can help us make sense and navigate a bewildering and very complex world. You are indeed precious as diplomats. Therefore, this dinner is dedicated to you. This dinner celebrates you, the professionals. I want to thank you once more for everything you are doing to help us navigate our complex world and promoting good governance and trade, in fostering cultural understanding and mutual respect and in pursuing peace and prosperity for our beloved nation. Thank you for your attention. Long live Sweden. Ladies and gentlemen, have a good evening and enjoy yourselves. Thank you. 